to discuss about space traffic management, I have uh, uh, invited Kaju Vashrogl. He is currently seconded uh, from the European Space Agency uh, to the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy in Berlin. Uh, Kaju Vashrogl has written and co-edited 20 books and more than 140 articles, reports and papers in the field of uh, space policy and law, including space traffic man management. So I can only recommend to read, uh, read those uh, publications in addition to this podcast and of course in addition to our conference. So uh, welcome to Kai Uwe. Thank you very much for inviting me, Paul. Good evening from Berlin. Maybe you can uh, say something about your, uh, in addition, about your background and your connection to space traffic management. Well, I have been working on space traffic management since the early 2000s. In 2006, I was the study leader of a study of the International Academy of Astronautics. And this study on space traffic management was a kind of standard uh, since then. In 2014 to 16, I was the chairman of the legal subcommittee of UN COCUOS. And uh, at that time, we established an agenda item on space traffic management. And now I have uh, more or less continued that work on space traffic management as the organizer of the European Space Traffic Management Conference of July 2021. Good, but before we continue, we have to maybe explain what is space traffic management and how is it defined? I think, Kajuva, you are the right person to ask this question. So how, how are you defining exactly space traffic uh, management and what is it? So what, what do our listeners have to know about, uh, about it? Well, first of all, space traffic management, or STM, uh, responds to the rapid increase in space activities. We see more and more states using their own satellites. We see more and more private actors. And we see new forms of space activities as mega constellations. The results of all this is a growing lack of safety. STM is trying to, to remedy uh, this, uh, and it can therefore be defined as the technological and regulatory means to enter into outer space, operate in outer space, and return from outer space to Earth in a manner which is safe from physical or radio frequency interference. So this definition uh, was drafted uh, for the 2006 study of the International Academy of Astronautics. And it has been even used uh, by NASA appropriation bills uh, in the U.S. House of Representatives. So it's, it, it's rather broadly used and quite accepted. So, and if we are talking now about space traffic management, so what are the main challenges that we are facing? So. Why should we talk more about uh, space traffic management and what are the issues? We have to create a common understanding of the governance uh, around the globe uh, that we need uh, to act multilaterally, uh, that we have to establish norms and rules of behavior which would benefit all actors in outer space. Um, this would, of course, reduce the freedom to operate in, in whatever ways the governments want to operate. But in the end, this restriction would be for the common benefit and also is in the self-interest of the actors. So in, uh, if you talk about the challenges, are they the main cha challenges uh, in the legal domain, policy domain, or technology, or is it a combined uh, mess? <laughs> well, it is unfortunately a combined mess, but uh, I think we are approaching a good situation where, first of all, all the actors understand that they have created a mess, as you say it, uh, in these three areas, and that 
it's not enough to act in one field, but that we have to act in all three fields together. So basically, if we are, our conference is focusing on uh, space cybersecurity, so it's only one of the domain, its main, main focus is on uh, technology. So it is a topic, during this conference, we cannot solve all the issues about uh, space traffic management. So it's only one component and we need further discussion in different fields than in addition. Yes, uh, absolutely. But we have to start somewhere. Uh, if we wait until everything falls into place uh, as a kind of miracle, uh, we will never uh, come to terms. So the more precise we start, the better it is for the further development and building up block by block a coherent space traffic management regime as a whole. Kajuva, you have been very active in uh the field of space traffic management, all the books and pub publications and talks you have made. So what inspires you uh, the most on the STM topic? Why are you doing it and what, what, what's, uh, what's the driving force here? Well, we can, or I should say we at least could remedy a, a difficult and dangerous situation, which is uh, a real threat in perspective for all those active in outer space. We can, and this inspires me most, um, do better than climate change. Do better than fighting climate change. We still have the chance to establish rules for space traffic management now at a stage which is still manageable. Today, we do not have to wait until it might be too late like in climate change and for outer space, collisions happen all over the place uh, in the orbits around the Earth. So we can do something really good and we can approach it at the right time. Um, this year Germany was uh, pushing forward the discussion about space traffic management in Europe. One of the key activities was uh, the European Space Traffic Management Conference and you were one of the initiators of this initiative. So what, what is the outcome of the conference and uh, what is the European view on space traffic management? Yes, indeed. Um, the space traffic management conference was a key issue for us uh, in, the, um, in the presidency we held last year. We were able to, to take a, a really big step in putting Europe on the stage for STM. I think uh, we were able to assemble all member states of the EU and of ESA together with their executives in a very coherent and in a very constructive way. And we were able to create a substantive outcomes paper uh, which reflects a joint understanding on the need of STM for Europe and uh, supported by a hearing and, and a, a broad mapping, uh, we identified what we already have in space traffic management and what we actually need. So uh, what do we actually have in Europe in space traffic management, for example? Well, we have technologies. Uh, we have uh, certainly an industry uh, which is ready to take up uh, all the challenges. Our operators are very responsive uh, for that. And we have on the governmental level a good understanding of what we need, also the gaps and the problems uh, which are created in, in a very diverse national legislation. And the will, I think this is most important, the will of the governments uh, to actually do something together. How do you see it? Is it more uh, only the, let's say, old large member states who have uh, space assets or do we have also uh, newcomers to the space sector active or interested in space traffic management? So how, how do you see the main countries maybe who are uh, leading the discussion? Oh, uh, space traffic management concerns everybody. So a country with 20 satellites or 50 satellites is as well threatened as a country with only two or three satellites. 
And you can believe that the smaller country is even worse hit if one of its satellite is colliding with another satellite. So it's in the self-interest of all states, be they large users of space or small users of space, to act together. And we see in the discussions uh, that it's not only the big countries uh, which provide their inputs and their ideas, but it's also smaller countries, also countries with specific uh, knowledge and specific expertise. And for that, we are extremely glad that Estonia, with its top, absolutely top expertise in cyber, is providing this element into the deliberations on space traffic management. This is absolutely welcome and it's useful and it's appreciated by all, all other states. So we're always uh, comparing Europe to the US. So uh, how do you see the cooperation with space traffic management between the European countries and the uh, United States and also maybe with China? So how do you see, is it more cooperation or is it um, doing everything by themselves? So how do you see the general uh, ecosystem here? Well, nobody can do anything completely unilaterally. Uh, we need everybody for setting up rules of the road in outer space, because outer space and outer space activities are transgressing uh, borders. On the Earth, you can make traffic system for your own country, fine. But in outer space, that's not possible. So we have to work together. The issue for us is how can we also provide our views and our interests for putting up and setting up a space traffic management regime? Is it only one country which decides on how this regime should look like? Or is it possible that everybody, so it means all countries, multilaterally can decide on what is set up? Now, we are really dependent with this one um, now, we are really dependent uh, on the data, the observation data, space situational awareness data of the United States. So they are our partner. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we very carefully check and discuss uh, with the United States what kind of rules we should set up. And I think with the European Space Traffic Management Conference of, of July, we have reached a kind of eye level with the United States where we can discuss with them and deliberate with them and jointly work on a, on a space traffic management position uh, for multilateral activities. We have not much heard yet uh, concrete uh, from the uh, other big actors, China and Russia in particular. So it's good that uh, Europe and the US first coordinate before it goes into the multilateral uh, discussions. The European Union and the European Space Agency are excellent examples of cooperation among countries with different uh, languages, uh, with different um, uh, maybe understandings. So can this, uh, what we have built up here in Europe, can, can be also a good example for how to set up space traffic management? So can this collaboration among countries, how we are talking everything through in ESA, for example, all the programs, uh, can this knowledge we have gathered, how to <laughs> create industry policy and uh, so that every, every nation is, uh, is happy with it, can this knowledge also be used for uh, yeah, setting up space traf traffic management? Can Europe be one of the examples how to coordinate it? Indeed, um, uh, Europe is, is, a, is an example uh, for regional cooperation which, which really works. And a lot of other world regions are, are looking on the experience Europe is uh, providing uh, to them as an example of what goes well, of, of what is, is, is not uh, going so well. Uh, and in this, we are also a kind of bridge, a bridge between uh, various world regions and, and also 
a bridge between the big players and, and the small players. Also, and I should stress that because we are ready to share, to share our knowledge, to share our experience. And this is also true, I think, in space traffic management, where in particular in the hearing, we also showed our openness to listen and also to provide our experience to others. So indeed, uh, I think uh, Europe can play a role uh, of a bridge, uh, also of a creator of ideas, also a supporter. And uh, often people say, everything takes so long in Europe until we, we, we find a decision. Yes, maybe, but it might take long, but we have then thoroughly discussed what is at stake and we have come to a conclusion which is reliable. So better take a little longer in deciding and then our uh, reliable partner also, then doing something very quickly and then change your mind every year. I think this is a characteristic of, of Europe in particular, also in the field of space and space governance. And I think that this is appreciated by a lot of countries. So what do you think, what is the way forward for us here in Europe? What are the next steps we should do now here in uh, as a ESA member states in the ESA programs, for example, and also in uh, European Commission or European Union level? So what are the next steps? Uh, together with the EU Council Presidency trio partners, so that means Germany together with Portugal and Slovenia, uh, as well as France as the upcoming uh, presidency, we, we set out a roadmap. A roadmap uh, which we are currently also implementing. At this moment, um, a presidency paper is prepared based on the conference and the following exchanges for the uh, EU Competitiveness Council in November are uh, enshrined uh, in this paper. Uh, on the other hand, the Commission and ESA are following up uh, the conference and the previous activities with their own studies and uh, we expect to see early next year uh, a consolidation and a solid position by Europe for STA. So in uh, today everyone is talking about new space, about private sector going to the space sector. It is also the reason why we are talking about space traffic management because we are having more and more uh, satellites in orbit. But, um, and the role of the private sector in, uh, in the space domain is growing. Uh, now the question is, will, will it also affect the space traffic management? How we are going to set up space traffic management? So will space traffic management be only a topic for the governments or, uh, uh, and, or it will be also opportunity for the private sector? Uh, so. Will uh, space traffic management create new uh, business models and support the global ecosystem? Or will it something that will slow down the development? How do you see it? True, true. absolutely, absolutely. We, we, we are now at a stage where the governance of space uh, by the states has to take into deeper consideration the knowledge and the experience of the private sector. Uh, the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, provides a good practice uh, for this. Um, in addition, STM will become a business case, uh, in particular, as, as you indicated, uh, for collision avoidance services or debris removal services. Um, this is why we have made STM also part of the German EU Council Presidency Initiative establishing key principles for the global space economy to highlight also this, this business and this uh, economic aspect. Um, when we also talk about, uh, about the public, um, uh, I, I, I guess th this is also part of your question, um, the role of the public, not only the, uh, the industry, uh, I can say the following, but whenever I give talks to citizens, yesterday, for example, uh, at a, at a Franco-German film event uh, showing the movie on Thomas Pesquet's day 
uh, on board of the ISS. I usually ask uh, the audience uh, when we have the discussion about sustainability and also very concretely about STM. And believe me, I get very, very clear messages that citizens expect us to be really responsible in outer space. Yes, I completely agree that uh, sustainable development of the space sector is a key key topic. And I think today every every government has uh, something in uh, in their space policy about sustainability and how to uh, how to use space. Unfortunately, of course, we have different uh, activities going on and also um, different te technologies tested on orbit, which are questionable, of course.